Good morning, I'm Liam Dan, New Zealand Herald Business Editor at Large, coming to you live from the NZME Newsroom, where I'm joined by Auckland mayoral candidates John Tamahiri and Phil Goff. Uh, we're going to be discussing their plans to support the city's small business community, including looking at uh, the future of transport infrastructure, housing, and how council initiatives shape the way we all live and work in the city of Sales. <coughs> Today's mayoral debate is brought to you in association with accounting software provider MYOB. And so as well as questions I have, we'll be asking some of your questions and sharing some of your comments. And you can post those on the New Zealand Herald Facebook live stream, which you could go to now. Uh, John, Phil, uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, let's, let's start with the, the, the business topic of the day. Business confidence is very low. There's a lot of debate about why that is. Is it political? Is it something wrong with the economy, policy settings? John, I'll start with you. Uh, why is it so low in your view? Oh, it's um, a lack of crystal clear leadership in terms of direction. And so uh, whether it's from central government, which holds all the big levers, uh, down to the second biggest balance sheet in the whole of the country, and that's Auckland City's balance sheet. So what um, all business people require is clarity and certainty as to where they can actually uh, make the major investments. So if you look at the big uh, infrastructure questions, uh, the problem we've got is that uh, into administration uh, they get changed over and swapped over. That destroys confidence in your ability in, in some of our major providors and uh, infrastructure. Capacity and competency issues then rise, you see, and so the, the, it has a bleed through the whole of the economy if you don't have clear certainty and clear direction in terms of the investment propositions when you weigh central government's balance sheet in with sure. regional government. So as Mayor, what can you do to fix that? Well, look, one of the biggest issues we've got in this mayoralty is um, how we uh, assure Aucklanders as uh, the biggest economy in the country uh, of certainty of investment from central government. <laughs> but more than that, drag central government's balance sheet uh, into front-end loading our infrastructure projects rather than bleeding them out over 10 years, I like to see it up front loaded in five. And you'll see some new numbers coming out today uh, as to exactly the headspace central government's got to do that, uh, as, as we did as Aucklanders in funding the rebuild of Christchurch. Mm. Okay, Phil, I'll <coughs> throw the same question yep. to you. Is it, is, it, is it central government making your job difficult? Uh, why is business confidence low? Well, I think it's a combination of things, as always, and as you report in your columns, uh, a lot of it's international. Uh, you've got Brexit, which is uh, a shadow over us. It's the China-US uh, trade disputes. Um, but it, it, it's also undoubtedly got some domestic factors uh, uh, around it. What can we do to, to fix that? Well, look, you know, in one sense, Auckland is booming. Uh, you just got to look around the city and you just see it everywhere you go. Um, 98 cranes on the horizon, more than any American city. Uh, $73 billion worth of commercial investment. Uh, building consents now well over 14,000 for the first time ever. So things are happening there. It's happening okay, on the okay. ground. But what, do, what, do you, what can you so do what, as mayor what, what can, in, in, in what another can, term? Yeah, what would you what, do what, to, to what improve the What can central government do about the, the fall off in business confidence? Well, I think they could probably listen to uh, some of the advice they're getting um, from the Productivity Commission, which says, hey, you take a growth city like Auckland and growth cities need extra capital funding from central government. Uh, I think that's important. And from Adrian Orr on the Reserve Bank. Uh, what we want, I set up a mayoral task force on housing and we were looking at the problems, uh, you know, private sector, uh, government, local government, NGOs, looking at the problems in the housing sector. And the critical thing that came through was, please give us a pipeline of work that we know that we can plan for over the, not just the next two years, but the next 10 years, because it takes five years to train an apprentice. So, so you're, so, you're, you're um, pushing the government to get into the infrastructure I've, stuff too. I've, a lot of, lot of economists yeah, look, saying we, they need to get on with it. Yeah, we, we've, got a, we've got a backlog of work that hasn't been done for a decade because we've underinvested in infrastructure. Now we're starting to turn that around. You know, the 28, 29 billion <coughs> that's going into trans the transport network over the next decade. But, you know, if the economy comes off the boil, that's the very time when you want to invest in infrastructure because you know you're going to need that long term and you're going to have an underutilisation of resources that you can draw on. That's not where we're at just at the moment. We're running white hot. We've got a shortage of resources. Sure. But, sure. but I think planning that out for the longer term and giving that certainty is really important. OK, I'm going to come to the MYOB uh, Business Monitor snapshot here. They polled 300 uh, Auckland-based small businesses. Um, this may not surprise you, but uh, the poll the poll wasn't great for uh, level of satisfaction in, in, in Auckland Council. And so 
I guess uh, I'll come back to you, John, but 39% um, dissatisfied with Auckland City Council's level of support for small business, 31% believe the council's support for small business has got worse in the last five years, and 36% believe the council's initiatives have negatively impacted their business. Are they right to be that grumpy? Oh, I mean, they're always grumpy, aren't they, business yeah, about, about councils? Always. No, no, of course. Yeah. Of course, so one of the best jobs they had was um, Minister Small to Medium Enterprises. The problem we've got uh, is you've got to use your balance sheet in Auckland uh, in a supportive function for uh, building scalability of Auckland businesses. And to do that, um, under the Local Government Act, price pointing is a very important issue. But it's not the sole issue. And so if you look at my procurement policy, um, I, I want a greater preferment in building scalability on Auckland-based and New Zealand-based businesses rather than um, off-putting all of these two uh, multinationals offshore. And a number of the multinationals have been given contracts under this present regime. Uh, multinationals in and of themselves are not bad, uh, but if you have a look uh, at where profits are cycled to, uh, we have problems. If you have a look at where taxes are paid to, we have problems. So you have to start to be a bit more jingoistic about uh, your preferences in building scalability of New Zealand businesses. If we're not going to invest in our own businesses, uh, we're going to have major problems. And we are. And so the grumpiness comes when you're, you're made a sub subcontractor uh, and you're not able to actually uh, bid in a fair market because the tender system now is just a joke. Uh, what it is is, is that you pitch between these two numbers or you get lost. Yeah. Now, that, that, that means that your margin as a businessman is going to be extraordinarily minimalised because you don't have control over the pricing. So what we have is uh, a, a perverse market uh, in, in the country where you've got cartels or you've got duopolies. Look at food, uh, look at electricity, look at banking. Construction. Uh, uh, construction. It goes on and on and on. So what we need to do is use one, the purchasing and procurement capacity, and two, we're going to have to strengthen, and this is the elephant in the room all the time, uh, Auckland is in a headlock by central government, and competition law just has to be changed, uh, and if uh, they're too big, they have to be broken up a bit to allow um, uh, others to grow scalability and competition in the market. Okay, I'll come back to some of those points around how you achieve that, yeah. but uh, Phil, are they grumpy with you? I mean. No, I think, I think if you look back over the business sector, um, they are traditionally grumpy. Yeah, well, in the last five years, yeah. they, they seems yeah. to have got um, yeah, but I less... Look, it depends where you go to. You talk to anybody in the, the, the film industry, for example, at the moment in Auckland, it's a billion dollar industry. They're over the moon with the prospect of the Amazon bringing its uh, filming of Lord of the Rings here. And so they should be. You know, this is 20 going to be worth, subsidy. This is going to be worth, not, not from us, um, we get <laughs> the benefit. Matter. We, we get the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of extra yeah. jobs and the billions of dollars of extra expenditure. <coughs> Talk to the marine industry. Are they happy about the America's Cup and the fact that we've negotiated that um, and, and that's off the ground? Yeah, that's going to that's be huge. You talk to the tourism industry and ask them about Destination Auckland. They've worked hand in hand with ATED to get that off the ground and to, to get a good result from it. If you look at business generally, they've had the lowest rate increases of, of any city, any significant city in the country, and they've had the benefit of the reduction in rate differentials for business. So they've been traditionally paying 34, 35% of the rates. That will come back over time to 25% at an equitable level. So actually, if they looked at it fairly, I think they'd say, hey, there are a lot of things here that are happening that are very positive, and actually the city is positive. You go out and talk to people uh, on the street about what's happening around the city and how it's moving forward. Uh, actually, you don't get negativism. When we've polled, how people feel about the future of the city, they feel really positive Taylor about it. Tale of two cities there, Liam. Yeah. Tale of two cities. Yep, yep. yep. Um, look, look, look and, and another thing that comes through in this survey, and I think um, is that, uh, well, it's, there's kind of a poll, and we're using it as a, as, as a, as a poll, but they've got, um, uh, despite their dissatisfaction, they've got, uh, they're saying that 25% would vote for Phil, 15% for John, what really stands out here is 46% don't know who to vote for. And I just wonder if they're looking at you guys going, which one's the, the business guy? Aren't, you guys are both uh, old lefties, aren't you? If you go right back. No, no that's not true. Um, he, he's, he's right again, Genghis Khan. Sold everything. I've always been pretty government. business friendly, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but here's the other thing. Um, no, I have run businesses. Uh, we are in developments. We uh, were the first movers to break open Westgate. Uh, in a 50-50 joint development. I, I, I broke of that. 
Uh, we're building 120 houses at uh, Great North Road right now for delivery this year. More, more houses than Phil Twyfe and Phil Goff put together. <laughs> it's not true. So, <laughs> you so, keep saying that, but so it doesn't the, make it any more true. So, it's no, just but, nonsense. But my, my point is, yeah. is that you know, employed 250 people today. Yeah. Uh, we've got the second yeah. largest IT uh, social services software in the market right now. So you've got to look at um, background and pedigree. You know, I, whilst I have been a politician, um, I've also been very successful in business, no doubt about that. So I think you've got to bring that into to play. The problem we've got is um, a reluctance amongst business folk to trust any politicians, mm. generally speaking. It runs, across, uh, it runs across the board, and I think that comes with the territory. Yeah. Phil, you got well, some business yeah. credentials? Yeah, well, you know, uh, one is called the Free Trade Agreement with China, which saw our trade with China quadruple, and uh, now over $30 billion in two-way trade. Thanks to Tim Glosser. Uh, he, he keeps making it up again. Uh, I, I led the negotiations on that. Tim wasn't part of that. You cut and, the ribbon. And Tim will, Tim will be the first person to tell you that. Um, international education, that's now a $3 billion industry. Yeah. Uh, and I initially that as uh, Minister of Education when I took away the prohibition on, on state institutions being involved in international business. I think through my time, you know, I've led multiple uh, trade missions and still leading occasional ones uh, to China for the, uh, the, the, the strategic alliance with, uh, with Guangzhou and Los Angeles. You talk to the business people that come with me on that and they'll talk about the leadership that I've been able to show. And, you know, look, yeah, I've been part of reform governments in this country and, uh, uh, you know, what we, what we have today is a result of some pretty radical changes that we made to, to this country's future. If you look at the state of the boardroom, you know, it was 73% uh, Goff, 11% uh, Tamahiri, and I think that's a bit of an indication of business sentiment. I guess what I'm getting at is that you guys, um, different styles and di different, uh, Quite different, styles. different styles, but, but yeah. if you're a, a, a business owner who, who is looking for that traditional, who, who's the small government, they want red tape cut, uh, yeah. all that, which, which one's the, 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 the low government, small government, well, well, let's, low let's, rates, let's, low let's taxes? Have a look, let's have a look at what we've oh, done in the, in the 10 year budget. Um, and in the 10 year budget, we've found a billion dollars worth of savings mm -hmm. because I have set out right from the first day in the Meralty that we would have value for money studies, the section 17A under the Local Government Act. We're doing it more comprehensively and more effectively than any other local government in this country. And as our external review panel uh, announced uh, last week, we've already found the first, we've already banked the first $270 million in savings. Yeah, if, That's if no that mean was, feat. Yeah, sure. That's actually a real achievement. No, no, if that was true. No, it is uh, true. No, no, it's, but, it's but, but, let's, but let's it's true. We're going to have our fact checkers on the But let's pretend, yeah, can, it, let's, check pretend it. let's pretend it's true. Uh, why, no, don't why, then, why, then, why, why then would you continue to ratchet up rates at 10.5% that he's promised? Because we, we need more no, investment no, no, on, on no, infrastructure. No, no. So, so when, what well, you, you're, you're freezing rates, you right? Want, yeah. you need fiscal rigour yeah. in, yeah. yeah. in the city. Yeah. Uh, to pretend he's saving $100 million a year is great because it hits right down the marker uh, what I need to save to deliver a freezing of the rates over the next three years uh, by sal salvaging people from his 10.5% mean. Uh, it's actually it's actually a lot bigger than that because it's a cumulative rate. Lowest in the here's country. The, here's the other lowest thing. Lowest in the country, No, no, John. Phil, let's get a reality. It is lowest in the country. You brought in a number yeah. of stealth taxes. I, I'm they going, weren't stealth. I'm going to the that. election, uh, in the environment tax, the water tax that you brought in. I mean, we knew, we knew they were coming, but... Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They were we didn't know they were coming. Tens no, of thousands yeah. of people. No, you did not yeah. know those two. Yes, he, he, he had to go no, out and poll. No, you no, did. He had to go out and poll them you, after you the did. Know, but I mean, okay, we set out in the mayoral proposal, mm. and there were six months of yeah. consultation. The question on that it, John. raises, so let's stick to the facts. The question yeah. that raises, John, is is if you're going to uh, spend more, if you're looking at uh, you know more infrastructure, harbour crossing, how do you pay for it? If you what do you cut? Because it's New Zealand Transport Agency funding, Liam. You've got to look at where the source of dollars comes from. So he just makes it up when he says it's going to. Another crossing is going to cost ten billion dollars. He, he he doesn't have to provide any evidence because you guys never ask for it. When I uh, promote an option for another crossing, that crossing is going to be funded by the New Zealand Transport Agency, not the ratepayer in Auckland. What we've got to do is get central government funding into finishing uh, the Auckland network off. That's three point four percent of our rating. But in Auckland terms, it, they are our major arterial routes that need to be finished from uh, out, out from uh, Mill Road all the way through uh, up to punching north of Kumiu. So um, they're all uh, New Zealand Transport Agency funded. That's why we've got to upfront load central government funding into finishing Auckland's infrastructure projects. They are not ratepayer funded. So to suggest that um, I'm going to print money from somewhere, it's already in the ATAP budget. 60% of that $28 billion is yet to sure. be allocated. Sure, yeah. so we know no, that the small let, businesses let's, are stuck let's, in the traffic let's, and they're let's, unhappy. Let's, let's, let's have a reality uh, check here. 
Um, in the Auckland Transport Alignment Project, the 10-year budget that I negotiated with government, I got a 50% increase in funding. I got $19 billion out of central government. But there's a quid pro quo here. If we as a city that makes up you know, 38% of the GDP of this country want more from central government, the quid pro quo, whether it's Labor or National, is we've got to have some skin in the game. Mm. And that's what the regional fuel tax was about. So for every, every well, dollar, for every dollar mm. that we put in, the government provides at least another dollar and the private sector provides a dollar in, in, in uh, development contribution. So we end up with a $4.3 billion pot to actually do something about that sure. transport congestion. He says he's going to abolish it, despite the fact that his running mate said was the best thing that ever happened to Auckland. She voted for it and, uh, well, and, 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 and she, 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 she was, be, she was being realistic about it. But if you, if you don't... If you don't have skin in the game, mm. how do you go to central government and negotiate more okay, for them? So going to central government, you're, you're actually on the same page there, but to an extent um, that it's about, we, rec we recognise that Auckland's bumping up against its debt limit. Somehow mm. you've got to get central government to come on board. How, how do you... Of course you uh, do, because they take 93% yeah, of the Different styles about how you yeah, do well, that. Yeah, so how are you no, going to no, convince no, no, central no, government no, to no, spend no, more money on Auckland? Yeah, yeah, of course you do. Um, well, uh, you've got to win the mandate of Auckland is to take that debate to Wellington. You see, the member for Mount Albert and the member for Chatatsu and the member for Kelsland don't just jump on a plane and then relinquish all their obligations, duties and responsibilities to Aucklanders. Uh, what we've got to do is have a grown up conversation that Auckland is too small as a rate base to continue to be taxed and gouged by golf and we're too big not to finish off our infrastructure projects. Uh, unless, uh, if you don't break that imbroglio, if you don't break that conundrum, um, all we're going to do is go around in a toxic little sand pit, moving the sand around, thinking that we're creating a solution. So that's simply not true. So, so you need you need someone to take on Wellington rather than be a puppet to them. So, so it gets, oh, finally, it, fine, I'll just say this. Okay. I don't want to be the cabinet minister for Auckland as he is. I want to be the mayor that champions Auckland's rights. So it comes, back, it comes back to what you said about how do you negotiate with central government. Well, I know a little bit about central government. I was a minister for 15 years yeah, and, and did the job competently. I never criticised, <laughs> uh, never got myself into any trouble, John. Never got never got uh, asked to resign. Yes, you're yes, yeah, 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 no, no. But what I know about negotiation is this. And I've done a few in, in the trade field. You never start off the negotiation by abusing and insulting the people you're negotiating with. And John, that's your weakness. Every time you go yeah, into, a, into a discussion with somebody, you start off by putting them offside. They so, won't want to, whether so it's Labor or National, they at, won't want to negotiate with you. Let's look at because negotiation. Because you start just as you've, you've <laughs> just done, in, in, in criticizing right and, right okay. and, and, and uh, abusing bar. the people you're suggesting that, different that styles, you're negotiating I think, John. with. And, and your oh, style no, hasn't worked in your political career, John. It failed completely. Well, let's well, say, John, John answer completely. that. Okay, thank you, Phil. Now, so, so th that shows you the total diversity of negotiation methodology here. So I understand that we are one in three of the New Zealand population. I understand we're 40% of the GDP. I also understand that you cannot have a government without Auckland. I also understand that you cannot have a cabinet without Auckland. Phil has surrendered Auckland's mana to Wellington. He just does that all the time. Now, if you're going to have to, if you have to change that, you need a change of leadership modus operandi. To do that, you have to win the mandate of Aucklanders to take a very strong position to Wellington. That is what I'm seeking this Saturday. That's what I will get. Yeah, you're well, saying you're saying shake it up, right? But I guess the question is, is it so broken that Aucklanders want to shake it up at a risk of uh, derailing what's already underway? Well, what's what? What are they derailing? More taxes and more rates. He's yeah. already said well, I'll, that he's going to be. He's already said that he's going to be elected and he'll ram yeah. the rates right up, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's so we already know that. We all know that because because that's what you said on the fourth yeah. of March. Yeah. So what we've got to do is say no, no, no. Um, yeah. The headspace that central government has got uh, in the present numbers that they're going to report today as well as the headspace that they made by pushing their debt limit out 25% as you've reported on Liam, is there a significant space? The question then is, is what are they going to do with that? Yeah. Okay, well it has to come to Auckland rather than anywhere else. We, we send 93 cents of our dollar down to Wellington and have no say on our own infrastructure yeah. projects, that has to change. Okay, okay. Let's, let's come back to the question that you actually asked. And okay, what progress have we made? <coughs> well, a 50% increase in our 10 year budget for transport network, that's, that's really significant. Bigger than it ever has been before and filled a $6 billion gap that existed in the last uh, um, Auckland Transport Alignment Project negotiated just three years earlier. Uh, secondly, you, you look at housing and we look at the, the problems of, of homelessness and the fact that the market doesn't supply houses for everybody.
So we've mm. gone down, we've talked to government, we've got the biggest ever increase in state housing coming into Auckland that we've seen since the 1940s, and we've got $190 million out of government to support our awesome. Housing First programme, where we have housed in the last two and a bit years, we've housed over a thousand people, half of them kids, got them out of emergency housing, out of cars, off the streets. We're making progress in these areas. You look at the progress that we're making Phil, in terms I of think the you're environment, our and, and you see, and you see what we're doing there. For 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 a hundred years, we've been pouring our wastewater into the harbour and onto the beaches every time it rains. And I've brought those plans forward by 20 years. We will do in a decade what was going to take 30 see. years to clean up our beaches. And All I'm right. proud of that. And that's what Aucklanders yeah. will vote to continue. Okay, okay. And so, so you mentioned socio-economic things here. This is a business debate, but we're getting a few questions off Facebook. I'd like to, to, to address. You know. What about the, the, the poorest members uh, of society in Auckland? You know, the fact mm -hmm. that they, they sort of have to travel furthest to work, they're yeah. in jobs, they're yep. stuck yep. in the traffic yep. in yep. South Auckland, well, losing the biggest, money. Well, well yep. the, biggest, the biggest and most regressive and egregious tax that you can ever apply to working people under $60,000 a year in the city is to bring an 11 and a half cents no, 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 petrol your, tax. Your water rate no, 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 the bill increases $300 the, the for most low income families will be the we'll biggest. Come, we'll, we'll come to work here soon. But let's look at the immediacy yep. of the adverse impact of a petrol tax. That is the one that is the most regressive across the world. That is just a fact. So to suggest that uh, bringing 11 and a half cents a litre to Aucklanders only, uh, after we've paid for Christchurch, Wellington, Kaikoura, and we've paid for the Provincial Growth Fund, is just unacceptable conduct by any leader, particularly when they try and make out they're independent, but they're really with Labour. So the day you start attacking and gouging your own support base, uh, without any reflection on the ability of central government, which is also led by a Labour government, uh, to support working class people, you've got problems. You then have a look at uh, the price of affordability in the city on top of his petrol tax. So when you put the uh, five taxes all together in the last three years, you actually start to see a, a rate burden of significance. That then is passed on to rents, because you can't escape. There's knock-ons everywhere. And so uh, poorer folk got nowhere to run and hide. Uh, the affordability goes through the roof. Uh, their wages, their wages and salaries are not keeping pace with the affordability index. And you know, and I don't want to generalise, but are you going to get them out to vote? Is this going to change the? Is this, well, is you this be, where you, well, where you get across the line? You know, here's, here's the beauty about what's going to happen on Saturday. Um, you, you, don't, you wouldn't want to be listening to the commentariat, but <laughs> but but what what I would say is what are your polls showing us? There is change coming, Phil. Okay, yeah. so Phil's got three pensions already, right? The, the, the oh, come on. No, no, you've got three I, pensions. Look, look, I never and, took $195,000 and a golden no, handshake no, from the, the charitable trust no. I worked for oh, yeah, that he promised you. he would never talk <laughs> and talk <laughs> and then had to resign from a, a so being moving, a minister. So let's not three, get personal moving, about moving this. Moving on from his three pensions yeah. plus the salary, all I want yeah. to say is, is that you know there are poorer people that you've got to start to think about. And I put my record in terms of serving vulnerable communities against his any day. Okay, well, let's, 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 day let's, let's answer your okay. question. Uh, first of all, yeah, we have to look after, we have to be an inclusive city. We've got to look after the least well-off people. That's mm -hmm. why That's why I'm sitting down with Julianne Genta right now and working through to try to give something for the community services card so we get a sizable reduction in their travel by public transport. Improving tra public transport is going to be a big thing for the How elderly, for the disabled, and for those that can't afford to run a, a, a car. And we are we are do we are mm. doing that. But we're also, you know, the the current government. Let's give credit to the current government. By by 2021, the average family will be getting the average low income family will be getting another seventy five dollars a week in terms of the family support package. And that's important. You can't simply say we won't have any general rise in, in something like the regional fuel tax because it will hurt some and then we'll, 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 we'll stop everybody else uh, paying their fair share. When we brought in the regional fuel tax we also took off $114 which was the interim transport levy. I had pensioner after pensioner saying to me, okay, we're in our own home, we've, we've paid it off, but we hardly use the traffic at peak hour time, but we're still paying the interim transport levy, and they've lost that. So it is a more user pay system. Okay. Okay. But, but look, the, the other critical thing, if you look at what keeps, what makes people poor in Auckland, it's housing. That's why we put the emphasis on housing, getting the extra social houses, making sure that we're increasing the number of houses <coughs> being built so that the supply keeps up with the demand, which other Otherwise, pushes up the cost of rent sure. and, and home. I purchase. want to rattle through a few. So of those, those things other, are important. Yep, yep. Rattle through a few of the other uh, big issues. That that water care one is interesting. Uh, it, it, you know, the privatisation of things usually goes pretty well with business. Uh, this poll says the MYOB poll says that 22% agree, 44% don't with partial privatisation. But 
There's that, and, and you know, other things, the port, sell the well, port. Well, well that, that's hardly surprising that the MYOB are opposed to it. Everybody's opposed to it. You know what that's going to do? And we've just finished talking about low-income people. If you privatise half of oh, Watercare, that's $5 billion you're, worth. You're, you're, yep. you're, you're pro-business. No, no, hang on, uh, hang on. Hang on. Let, me, let me finish the point, you, yep, yep. because it's relevant. If you privatise half of Watercare, you will have to, according to the economists I've talked to and to Watercare, you'll have to push up uh, water rates by two to three hundred dollars a year. That's the equivalent of a 12% rise in your, your average general rates. And who's that going to hurt hardest? It's going to hurt hardest the people with families who are also quite Trying often low income yeah. and are struggling. Yep. But why is the business against it? Because they look at water care and they see, and as, as both governments, National and Labor, have said to me, water care is the best water provider in the country by a country mile. Best standards of water, best provision of water. It's also a basic sure. need, yeah, and, okay. and it's oh, also uh, a monopoly situation. Oh, so why would you? Well, well, let's see here. Why, why, why okay, would you? Okay. Well, I'm the only person here that's got some solutions in re redesigning the balance sheet of the city. And um, when you redesign it without taxing and gouging its citizens, well, that is a tax. When you tax when you're redesigning, uh, like no, I let you have a fair go, Phil. No, don't get too excited. The, um, the, the problem we have is uh, when you're rebuilding the balance sheet, uh, apart from taxing and gouging as he always wants to do, is you've got to use your assets a lot better. Yeah. Now, we've got a $10 billion asset sitting on the book. It's uh, duty bound not to pay a dividend. So I've got, a, I've, got a, I've got this business. It continues to rate three separate rates a year on every person in the city. Uh, and it doesn't pay anything. So you've got to try and look at where I can release dollars to cut his stealth taxes and get uh, no, and get the water system uh, built. Yeah. Here's the other interesting thing. When WaterCare was set up, um, the uh, water services group, in terms of uh, the failing infrastructure they've got right now, was separated out of WaterCare. So we get a double whammy if you're a ratepayer in Auckland because you're having to fund the total rebuild of this thing as well as not get access to the water care business that's got all the money to help you through this. So you release 49%, which is not privatisation. Phil understands privatisation. You sold everything. Pri privatisation is selling 51% or controlling interest. So this is like the power yeah. companies, the government, government did with the yeah, power look, companies. Yeah, look, we've been down this track before, but you either... I mean, they went all right. Yeah, but you either want to... No, you either no, want to sell... You're, hang you're, on, paying, you you're paying a whole lot more for can, your electricity because of the... Can I finish because I'm paying. just defending my policy? He's, he's already had his chances of attacking it because he hasn't got any. So the, that's the water, that's the water one. It's a, a very, it's a very smart deal, right? If you look at the ports of Auckland, um, last year, not this year, last year, it borrowed $36 million to pay its dividend, and it was a pretend dividend. Uh, then went back to the parent for another $150 million for automation. Now, what we've got to do is protect the 77 hectares of land that's down there. It's iconic. Uh, the return on investment there is very poor. So we separate that. And we do what most good businesses around the world and ports have done, is separate the land from the business of the port. Ultimately, that port will shift over the next 25 to 30 years to Tauranga in the south and Northport in the north. And by that time, the infrastructure network will have been completed and built out. Not a problem. So I've got, so I've, mm. I've got um, dollars coming in, but I've got businesses that are failing that we've got to try and work yeah. out best dollar value for. So what do you do as a businessman? You sit on your hands or do you make some decisions? We've got to make some decisions. Okay, yeah, the port. Some, so some, the government yeah, seems yeah, to yeah. want to get rid of the yeah, port. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should it stay or go? Here's, here's the unreality of that argument. What the Working Party effectively um, is proposing, and that I came out strongly against, was that they're going to nationalise the port. They're going to take it and not give compensation for it. Well, that'll be, that's over, my, that's, that'll be over my dead body. How do you sell a port entity, yeah. a company, it's worth $600 million Don't on our estimates, for. How do you sell that? It's not that the working party that's making that decision. How do you sell a port that is not going to that, that the that the working party says has no future? You don't. You can't. But come back to water care. Right, what do you do? Nobody, it. nobody is in favour of that. He talks about tax gouging. Mm. He's going to put three hundred dollars a year extra that's on low income families Phil, through you, extra payments Phil, for you've water never come rates. With any evidence for no, that. that's. I, I've got the evidence. You ask any economist, and you ask water no, no, care. What the figure can I come back to that figure? You haven't, you haven't tabled, tabled it. it. The evidence is there, and, and somebody with it? basic mathematical skills can work that out. Let's come back to some other um, uh, what, what maybe more innovative solutions here. So public-private partnerships. 
Business likes those. Mm -hmm. Are you open to them, Phil? Yeah, yeah. But uh, look, what what a public but, private but, partnership. What a public well, I mean, private it's, it's someone coming and building the road and you toll it you know, and, and, and you make I'll, it happen. I'll, yeah, I know what it is. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm not against it in principle. But what it does is that it lessens your capital investment in the first instance and increases your operational costs over the longer term. And you've got to weigh the cost of one against the other. And, you know, yep, we can we could do something like Penlink. We could do that as a, a, a PPP. I've, I've, I've got no difficulty with it. We're actually talking about PPPs in terms of housing development as well. Yeah. But, but you, you need to work through in every instance to say what is going to ha what impact is that going to have short, medium and long term on the people of Auckland yeah, and sure. what will it cost uh, them? We, sure. need, we need multiple new tools to be used rather than tax and gouge, right? PPPs are one of them. Uh, smarter use of releasing equity and assets like water care. Privatisation. Uh, municipal bonds, we've got to look at uh, those. Um, but everywhere we go, uh, it's uh, regulated at the moment, and so the first three years of the new mayoralty will be resetting and refreshing the legislative framework so that uh, not just Auckland, but TLAs generally up and down the country uh, will be able to look at multiple different commercial tools to be applied uh, as we lay off um, the risk on ratepayers for being consist consistently sure. gouged. And who do you work with? Because you, you've talked about being a bit more focused on yeah. procurement locally. What about the Chinese? I've been up to China. They've got uh, a Belt and Road project. They yeah. could build a four-lane highway yeah, see, all the way from Fongarei to Hamilton. Well, that's, that's a, that, that, that could be a nutcracker. Now, he, here's the reason. Um, we've got cartels. We've, we expressed that at the beginning of uh, the debate. So we've got cartels everywhere. Our delivery times are the worst in the world and the most expensive per kilometre that you can oh, think of. Now, if you have a look at uh, Takanini to Manirua, it's a disgrace. If you're a Westie like me, um, from Lincoln Road to Massey, seven years. Yeah. Now, the delivery times alone are a disgrace. It's a rot. Yeah. So you've got all the capex being expensed 24-7, uh, but the OPEX only being used six hours a day for five days a week. But is that... I mean, well, let, you let, can let, answer let, this, Phil. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, yeah. how does the mayor resolve that? That is, that is uh, yeah, yeah. national transport. Well, look, look uh, what we what we do. Whenever, whenever we embark on a major construction project, we put out the tenders internationally for expressions of interest, and then then for the uh, the RFPs on it. That's how we got to where we were on the, the the city rail link, and we've ended up with an international consortium that had the expertise uh, and came in with with by far the better price, but with local partners to do the job. So, you know, it's, it's no good talking about, oh, we could, we could go to China. China was free to, to bid on these tenders as it is any other tender. We look internationally, we take the best price, but what we also do on a number of these projects is look at some aspect of social mm -hmm. procurement. Mm -hmm. So wherever you come from to do this work, we say, we want you instead of just importing your skilled labour, we want you to take on people that we'll give pre-apprenticeship training to, but we want you to take them on and provide the trade skills sure. that they need. And we've done that on the Manukau bus yeah. station, but we're doing it on coming, the Eastern Come back to uh, traffic, because it's busway. coming through, come, keeps coming through on mm. Facebook, it comes through on the MYB survey, and I, I hear it all the yeah. time. Business people are fed up with sitting in that What's traffic, trying to get east, east mm. west, and south, and trying to get down yeah. to Hamilton, um, but they don't know who to blame. That's what gets me, and, and well, it's not very clear. What, what yeah, can you do yeah. as mayor well, to speed that up? What we can do is increase by 50% the amount of capital investment we're making in our transport networks. When we've got CRL in, that will double the capacity of heavy rail. It will mean that your, your journeys are shorter from, from uh, John's area, for example, 17 minutes quicker into town. The trips are more frequent. Light rail, when the government gets on and does that job, is going to take, is going to take the pressure off the, the central isthmus. You've okay. got busways in the north. You know how successful the northern busway has been in Auckland. Yeah. We're doing the same thing now. We've started construction on the eastern busway from Pamua to Pakaranga to Botany out to uh, and finally out to the airport. Those things will make change. Sure. But, but, I, I, but, I'm but they don't the happen overnight. The van. There's yeah. a guy they with a white van and he's trying to get yeah. across yeah, town to right. do a job. And the best thing that can happen to the guy in the white van is that the guy that can catch the train or the bus into town finds it more convenient and appropriate to okay. catch okay, the bus. Okay, John, how are you going to okay, well, speed well, this up? Well, let's look at the reality first because... Um, even if we spent the $28 billion of ATAP uh, and finished the Auckland network, AA's report shows that only 10% of Aucklanders no, would be in the no. public transport system. No. Now, that, that, that's about no. approximate to Vancouver, Melbourne, it's 53% Sydney, right? peak hour into so, Auckland so that's from that the point. shore. That's a fact. I'm, I'm not my words, it's AA. So the next issue that we've got to get is, is that how do we get um, Aucklanders linked and across to where the public transport systemic is? Because Auckland's such, Auckland's one of the fourth largest cities by geographic terms uh, in, in the world to get across. 
Um, but we, we're still very young in regard to our network. So what we've got to do is have uh, a lot more park and rides. We've got to be um, a lot more a enabled to cross over. What that means is you can't continue to make war on the motorists, as this bloke has with Auckland Transport Agency, on, on going from four lanes to two, have a look at Key Street and, and elsewhere, of, of actually dropping speed limits solely for congestion related issues, of, of going rephasing lights. True. So what we've got to do is all weigh in. Here's my yeah. final point that I'll say on this yeah. because it's very important. Congestion pricing is going to have to come. I've, I've put that on the table with my ports policy. The reason for that is that the supply side of the economy, like all great cities, has to shift. We can't all go out on the one eight hour envelope. So the supply side, truckies, uh, the, the distribution centre, uh, the warehousing, all of that goes as it does in great cities elsewhere, it moves. And so part of the, the carrots and the sticks about that is to, is to change the weight going on to your network okay. over yeah. volume. Here's two measurements, very quickly. Very quickly here's, here's two measurements of success. Firstly, we increased the patronage on our rapid transport networks last year by 21.5%. You tell me another city in the world that right. has had that level of increase. Secondly, we hit 100 million passenger trips a year, the highest since we had trams in the 1950s. So we are getting mode change. We have to keep doing that. We've put a whole lot more money in, okay. and we're still after it's more money. It's all agreed. Yeah, sure. One, one, another one from Facebook, and this is a big one. It really goes to the heart of everything that's happened in Auckland the last 10 years is the number of people coming in. So immigration is still high um, uh, in relative terms and most of those people are settling in Auckland. Are you for or against more immigration? John? No, no, no I'm for, um, always have been for immigration because we all are. Yeah. Okay. So you can't shut the gate after you've got in. Mm -hmm. What we can do is be far more measured about it. So that's point one. To do that, once again, it's a central government issue. Aucklanders wake up not to be growing by the size of Tauranga every three years, and Tauranga's just bumped an Eden out as our fourth biggest city. Aucklanders don't wake up and just say, you know, how to may everybody. This is a central government policy. Once again, it goes back to making his mates in Wellington more accountable for this central government planning that's mm. uh, 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 landed on Auckland. All of a sudden, Auckland ratepayers get double and triple taxed. So all I'm, all I'm saying to you is, I'm for managed Im immigration, and I'm for central government ensuring that it pulls its weight in regard to its central government policy that's led to that. Okay. Yeah, look, this, this city was built by migrants, all of us at some point over the last 800 years, most in the last uh, 200 years. Um, so you're not going to turn the tap off to migration. If you did, that would have dramatically bad effects on the prosperity of this city and the vibrancy and the excitement of the city as well. But if you're going to request Auckland to be our world-class, globally competitive city, then you must provide the funding for infrastructure to cope with that growth. And so, look, we don't we don't control migration in this country. I think, a, um, you know, down from the peak where we are at the moment would be good, but but still promote migration, skilled and uh, and experienced people that can contribute to to the city. But give us the money for the infrastructure so we can build the oh, houses, no. we They're can build the transport you, networks, we can protect our environment. We have been getting that money. We've got to keep getting that money. And, uh, you know, look, we're getting a proportionate share of the country's funds. But we are a growth city that's got half of the country's growth. It's got to be more than proportionate. Okay. It's got to cater for that growth factor. Yeah, I mean, we are, we're seeing a, we're seeing a very clear uh, choice here in terms of styles. It's been a, a, and we're drawing near the end of a, what's been a really lively uh, campaign. So I want to throw a bit of a random one. These have been, a, a, you've had a series of great debates. Um, what have each of you learned about each other uh, along the way? Can you give me something you've, uh, you didn't know that you've picked up along the way from, from debating uh, Phil Goff, John Tumhead? Oh look, we, we've um, debated what, is this our 38th or 39th? Yeah, somewhere like that, yeah. yeah. So, so I'll speak on his behalf, he's getting, <laughs> he's getting sick of seeing me, right? <laughs> so, so it'll all be I'd rather, see, I'd rather see more of yeah, a while, that's a fact. Yeah. I was going to say which one's Foreman, which one's it'll, Ali. It'll, be, it'll all be over the Saturday, Ali. thank God. Um, but you know, look, look I, I think um, what Phil's got is uh, he's uh, been a great journeyman, no doubt about that. <laughs> For 32 <laughs> years in Parliament, and now for three years. And with faint praise. Three years. Yeah. No, no, well, it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I don't want to pat him on the back. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's the reality. Um, we need change. Okay, and um, so Auckland is going to determine where that heads, whether whether they get change or they vote for same old. So it's as simple as that. Okay, Phil. No, no, they're, they're voting for change. Yeah. Uh, they're voting for change with me, and the change for the to build a better Auckland. But it will be done. 
in a in a work and I'll use his phrase a workmanlike manner. You've got to be reliable. You've got to be consistent. You've got to be trustworthy. Those things those things are critical. And you know, shake it up and see what falls out at the other end. I don't think Aucklanders will vote for that. They want some certainty about the future. And I think that's well, been that's been the weakness of the campaign that you've. Do you think on. Do you think Aucklanders are getting a bit, uh, getting two extremes here? I mean, there's almost like a bit of bit of. They're saying a bit, you know, a bit more vision from John, a bit more, um, a bit, sorry, a bit more vision from Phil, yeah. and a bit more um, incremental get down. And yeah. I mean, you guys aren't shrinking well, from that kind of uh, uh, stereotype yeah. that's sort of no, come no, through. Look, 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 the, no, vis- no, the vision, the vision, is, the vision is important, uh, but in the end, a vision without the means to put it into effect remains. It, it makes it an illusion. I'm, I'm in favour of a vision that can be delivered upon. But, but do you think and people wanted to hear, want to hear that. a bit more? Um, Grand, grand, yeah, grand but, scheme but, from but, but, but really good. You know, to go back to some of those figures, uh, that, you know, 21% increase in use of uh, public transport on rapid yeah, what, transit routes, yeah, yeah, cleaning up our environment, what, the million trees, look, um, you know, dealing we, with climate change, we, we, all of those we're things in an un, We're in an unusual phase of development, okay, and um, it's a tipping point. And you either, you either tip into mundanity or you change it. And so uh, this election, um, and I regret uh, the low turnout, and I regret that it will be a low turnout. But we'll see. Uh, it's, we, it's not 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 through lack of us trying. No, to I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. So, so we've. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, this is this is the the, the most uh, fraught and fought over um, election. And I, I think uh, whoever uh, you know, when we come out on top, um, you've got the mandate because it's been a vigorous one. Uh, the spe- specificity of my policies has been out there, um, you know, to be grilled over. So I think. I, I think it's uh, been a doozy, and uh, we'll just look forward to seeing how sad that was. Okay, mm. look, thanks, guys. We're going to wrap it up there. So, um, thank you both for joining me this morning, and I hope you know with, we do get out there. And uh, if you haven't voted yet, get out there and vote. Twenty four hours in. to get your twenty four hours, ballot or get them into yeah, the library. You can across. get them into the library all Mate, the way through Saturday. Have your say about the future um, of the city. Really so important. Both Don't of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the best with your final fact, Not important at all. And I'm Liam Dan. Thanks for your company. Thanks, Liam. Cheers. Good one. You got your mate. That's good.